All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. For those who've never joined us before, Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants is all about bringing adventure, science, and conservation into classrooms across the world. Today, I'm very excited to say we're joined live from the Aquarius Reef Base, 60 feet beneath the waves, and from Mission Control at Florida International University's base in the Keys. So without further ado, as we've got a short hangout today, I'll pass it over to Roy and Eileen, and they can tell you a little bit about what they're doing at the Reef Base. All right. Well, I'll start it off. I just want to say hello to everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Um, like I said, my name's Eileen. This is Carlos. We're part of the education team here at Aquarius, and our goal is really to bring all the amazing science and research that we're doing to groups everywhere. So thanks again for joining. Um, so without further ado, we have Roy Bartnick. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, okay. So, Roy, go ahead and take it. <laughs> Just right off the bat. Go okay. for it. <laughs> I guess all the introductions are done. Okay, I'm Roy Barnick. Uh, I'm a teacher in uh, Oklahoma in Eden, and I was lucky enough to be included in this scientific uh, journey that we're doing here in Aquarius. Uh, I literally just came back in off the dive setting up some experiments. So, you got to see me quickly showered and dried off, and here I am. Um, if you want, I'll take you on a little quick tour of the habitat, and then uh, we can have some questions. Would that be good with you guys? Okay. Awesome, so I'm right. kind of standing in the bunker room here, and this is the view we get to see every night when we go to sleep. That's last night we had a couple. Uh, we had a big bull shark swimming around out there, so we didn't get too much sleep because we're looking out the window. But as I back up, this is where we sleep in these little bunks. So and here's mine still with my uh, stuff I have to put away yet. Okay, so let me take you to, this is one end. This is our, our front end of the habitat. And I'll take you all the way back to the back where everybody is still kind of doing some work on this science. So here's kind of like the kitchen. And this is Mark. He's the guy who keeps us all alive down here. I know you do. <laughs> and there's Roxy. She helps keep us all alive down here as well. This is our little eating area with another fantastic view. Okay, we spent a lot of time at that table. Okay, these are all the control panels, control the oxygen and the pressure for us down here. This is our little kitchen area, complete with microwave. And these are the type of food that we eat. They're just dehydrated camping food. But there's plenty of variety that they have for us. So I, I think I'll probably put on a few pounds while I'm down here. Okay, let me take you further back. This is Ben. He is our sonar expert. He's also my diamond buddy, so I stay close to him. This is actually a picture of his sonar that he is setting up right now to where we can watch outside. Okay, can you see the other divers on that one right now? Uh, no, I can't. Okay. All right. Okay, so let me take a little bit further back, and we're going to see what the dry port or the wet port is. So hold on just a second. We have this big heavy door here, and I have to open it up. It's too heavy to open by hand. It'll come out here. It's a little bit humid. Huh? Okay. Let me close the door. Okay. This is our wet porch here. Um, a spotty connection, yep. Yeah. Yeah, guys, our connection is a little weak right now, so I'm sure we'll get him right back. But we did ask him to point the camera down because we realized he wasn't pointing it down. So we've already communicated that with them down there. Excellent. Uh, while this connection's off, do you want to tell us a little bit about the Teachers Under the Sea program, Eileen? Yes, exactly. So the Teacher Under the Sea program is something we launched last year where we tried try to embed um, scientists, um, try to embed teachers with scientists um, so that they can bring that knowledge back to the classrooms and then also conduct these virtual field trips for us where they're really just communicating um, what we're doing. Um, this particular mission, uh, what we're doing is we're actually attracting they're sharks. They're putting, out the, they're putting out some bait and what they're doing is they're seeing the eat when there's a shark in the area and then how they react when there's no sharks in the area. And that's the, what we were putting out this morning, all the, all the things for those sugar boards to eat so they can measure. And then they also have a, a sound microphone out there that makes noise like a fish in distress to where they're trying to lure sharks into the area 
to see if they can do that as well. And then with the sonar that Ben was working on, they can see if there's a shark in the area at night as well as during the day. And we can also see our, use our cameras that are outside. same time everybody's got to work really tight together they've got a lot of good plans to where as things are going on we have to be real flexible with our scientific you know activity um, and so far they're going pretty good so with all that being said i'm really hoping a shark swims by for you to see because that's when all of us come run to the window too but what questions might you guys have about anything i've said so far so, Roy, you, you dipped out a little bit there for a minute. Uh, Eileen took over and was talking about the Teachers Under the Sea program and the research project you were doing. Uh, I don't know if the class has any questions now. Uh, Mr. Taylor's class, I know you guys have to leave in a minute. So I'll do a brief introduction. We have tr uh, Trevor Taylor's class from Niagara Falls today. Grade 10 class. You guys to get up and get into the camera. Hello. Hey. Do you guys have questions about the week or anything that they're doing down there? Anybody? Uh, okay, go first. All right. Uh, have you ever been in a dangerous uh, situation when you were down diving? <laughs> I've been in dangerous situations, <laughs> but uh, and here everything's pretty safe. We all watch out for each other pretty good. We did where we were setting up one of our sites. There was a big scorpion fish there who just refused to move, so we had to move around him. Bianca, do you want to ask your question? No. <laughs> Bianca wanted to know how does being underwater habitat for such a length of time does that like affect your family life at all? Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> um, you know, I miss my family. Uh, I teach school too. I teach fifth grade. My wife's a third grade teacher down the hallway, so we're really not far apart most of the time. How long a mission do you have there, Roy? We'll be here for, uh, we'll come up in eight days. Okay. All right, and then we'll ask one more question from Mr. Taylor's class. You guys want to do? Go ahead. Okay. Um, are, are you ever afraid that any, that's like, if any of the side walls of the base are going to break? Okay, I didn't hear that. Can you repeat that? Roy, he said he's afraid. I wonder if you're afraid if any of the side walls of the base are going to break. Do you fear about uh, anything happening with the facility you're in? No, I, you know, I feel very confident in the technology here. These guys are professionals. They, they take care of everything. A little bit more? Okay. <laughs> yeah, they take care of everything pretty well for us. I'm, I'm not afraid in the habitat at all. We're just very cautious about airtime and how much time we're out in the water. Excellent. So, Mrs. Dolan's group actually just left for a second, so while they're gone, I'm Mr. Taylor's class. If you guys have any more questions, welcome back. Can we have one more? We were just wondering, we understand that you're doing, like, the science underneath the water, but what kind of technical training would you need? Because obviously working underneath the sea is a lot different than working in a lab or working in the field when you're on land. Okay, that, that's a great question. Um, I, I've been scuba diving for quite a few. I've been scuba diving since, like, 1984. But I thought I had a lot of knowledge. But when you get out here and start doing the scientific diving with double tanks, um, uh, they put us through a lot of grueling stuff, uh, but for the right reasons, to make sure that we can make it down here in case of emergency. So from recreational diving to this, it's a big jump. It was for me. Excellent. So thank you so much, Mr. Taylor's class. We're also joined live by the entire group at Edgewood Elementary. We've got over 120 kids from four different classes. If you guys want to give a big shout out to the camera, go right ahead. Can you hear us? We can hear you. Yes. I can, we can hear, you. hear you. It keeps going. Your sound keeps going out. We left the hangout and came back, but we can't hear you. You can't hear. I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. Can, can you hear me, Toronto? No, we can't hear you. No. <laughs> we can read your lips, but we can't hear you. Okay. Well, let me. Oh, dear. Okay, can I? I'm going to lock. Can I, we, we heard you for like five seconds when we came back in, and that's it. Let, can I leave again and try to come back? Go right ahead. Okay. Yeah. I think you're saying yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll have another question for Mr. Taylor's class if you guys have any that you want to ask. Hi, you had a question. Um, what's your 
My father says, yeah, 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 my father hoping that the herbivorous fish will graze, and then they're going to measure that. Um, the hypothesis is that it's going to be an effect, but I don't know what his null hypothesis would be other than no effect. Excellent. All right. So Ms. Dolan's group has come back in. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. We can hear you. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So again, this is four classes from Houston. We've got grades two through five today, over 120 kids. Uh, if you guys want to say hi to the camera, you can. Hello. 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 Can you hear us now? Yeah. Oh. Yes, we can hear now. We did oh. miss a lot of that good stuff. So we may be asking questions you already answered because for a good chunk of it we couldn't hear. Okay, do you okay. want me to show you the habitat again? Would you like that? Uh, I think that they were loving that they could see stuff behind you. Oh, yeah, that was I, I purposely fun. sat by this window for that. Can you tell us what we're seeing? You are seeing, this is our dining room table, and this is our view outside on the, of the habitat right there. This is what we get to eat dinner and breakfast with right here with this view. Very and then cool. you see our sonar expert as well. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And so you can watch the hands live too later uh, in Edgewood. You can see what uh, we did talk about in Mr. Taylor's class asked. Do you guys have any questions now? Questions. Yes, we do have some questions. Excellent. Yeah. Really loud. Who named the lab? Who named the lab? That is an excellent question. Uh, I'm going to have to ask the expert on that one. So hold on. Who, why, who named the lab? Oh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. <laughs> Noah did. The National Atmosphere and Ocean Administration did. Now, what person? I, I don't know. It, it's, it's a, a group, government decision. It's a government decision to name it. <laughs> See, you stumped me with that question. I had to learn something, too. <laughs> do you have to work inside cages because of the sharks? So when you're working with to, sharks, are you guys in cages sometimes to be protected? No. <laughs> no. Um, matter of fact, last night we were sitting here just kind of talking, drinking coffee, and a big nurse shark settled right outside the window. So we're just sitting there watching it. Um, if we're outside and the sharks are getting kind of aggressive or uh, following us around or something, they'll call us back inside. When we turn on the noisemaker to bring the sharks in, we're all inside. <coughs> You guys are so well behaved. Y'all taking turns, sitting quietly. How many days did it take you to build the? What they didn't do. Okay, we'll, we'll, we're gonna clarify this question. One second. Okay. You have one. Okay, they already broke one. Do you use submarine to take materials and equipment down? How do we bring it down? Yes, the materials and the stuff that you use down there. If we want to keep it dry, we have these big pots, um, basically the big spray paint pots. Um, they're pretty they're about the size of the porthole behind me. And what they do is they seal that up, and then they keep it pressurized, and they bring everything down. And then when they get it up inside the habitat, they can open it up. Um, computers, electronics like that, they have to gradually increase the pressure so nothing breaks. Um, regular computers have a hard time working down here because the disk drives rub. So all the computers we have are held in state, kind of like iPad. Yeah. Very cool. Do we have another question written down? Did you write it? How come there's only one underwater lab in all the world? Okay. Do you need me to repeat that one? Please. How? What? Um, do you know why there's only one underwater lab in the world? Plus, we saw on the site that maybe it's a little bit in jeopardy, so we're a little bit nervous about that. It is. Um, they're kind of expensive to run. Um, 
the Florida International University sponsors this one and they keep it running. Mm -hmm. As more and more people are becoming more concerned about the ecology and the environment for the coral system and the animals in the ocean and actually the water. Roy, you've cut out again a little tiny bit. So I can uh, take that one while we wait for Roy to come back. So yeah, as Roy was saying, Aquarius um, and underwater habitats are very, very expensive. Um, ours takes about 1.3, 1.4 million dollars to run every year. So it is quite an expensive um, operation. But as Roy, go ahead. Roy, Roy, are you back? All right, so keep going for now, Eileen, and we'll, we'll, if he comes back in, we'll go back. Absolutely, but the importance of Aquarius is as we we really need to learn as much as we possibly can about our coral reef ecosystems here in South Florida and in the Florida Keys, especially. We rely on coral reefs for so much. Um, you know, not only are they homes uh, to amazing um, you know plant and animal species, but they also help our economy. People come from all over the world to come and scuba dive our reefs and to see them. Um, so we really need to preserve them and make sure that they're around for generations to come so that your grandchildren oh, yeah. can come and visit them. So that's why it's important to have a place like Aquarius where we can really learn about the science um, and, and really inform policy to manage these resources better. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Roy. So we'll take one more question from uh, Mrs. Dolan's group again, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. Okay. Thank you. Who has a question? Or you guys? Who has one? What happens if you if there is an emergency? Did y'all hear his question? What happens if there's an emergency while y'all are there? Okay, we can't hear anybody. Are we supposed to hear people? So um, I think, Roy, we're still having some trouble with the internet, and we do apologize. It's just when the weather doesn't cooperate, our internet gets a little spotty. So I can actually answer that question. Um, the aquanauts are all trained. In the event of an emergency, we would actually evacuate everyone from there. Now, you have to keep in mind that yeah, when... Yeah. Okay. Are you back, Roy? I am. I, it seems dropping on my end, so I have to reconnect. Okay, so the students want to know what happens in the event of an emergency, if you can just answer that one for them. That's the last question. Uh, we practice that a lot. We, uh, there's, uh, on top. Okay. <laughs> so there's hatches up at the top um, and down at the bottom uh, where um, they can actually evacuate. So if there is a fire, um, Aquarius has different compartments that are independently pressurized from one another. So you can close off one side and still be able to be on the other side. So that's great if it gets flooded for some reason or if there is a fire. But we would evacuate them. Now what we have to keep in mind is that these aquanauts are saturated, which means that they're normal right now, just like you are in normal. You, you guys are at normal pressure right now. So if you go down 60 feet, you're actually in a different um, environment and your body gets acclimated to that. So in order for these guys to come from 60 feet back up to the surface, um, normally we would go through a process called decompression where we allow gases to basically come out of their bodies. But um, in the event of an evacuation, we would actually have to bring them back up to the surface and we'd have to put them in what we call hyperbaric chambers. And these hyperbaric chambers would allow these gases to come out of their bodies, their blood, their tissues. Um, they'd be able to exhale them away. Um, and that's basically how we would get them out of there and get them in a safe environment. But that's only in the event of an emergency. Excellent. Well, thank you so, so much, guys. Uh, as we do at the end of every hangout, I'm going to give both Mr. Taylor's class and the whole gang at Edgewood a chance to, to say thank you so much. So if you guys want to go right ahead. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thank you, guys. All right. Sorry that I cut out a little bit there, but thank you so, so much for joining us, guys. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, for the group from Aquarius Reef Base, we'll be seeing you again in about five minutes. Uh, but for the classes, we hope to have you exploring by the seat of your pants again soon. And thanks so much for joining us so early in the school year. Have a nice rest of your day, guys. <laughs>